So DHT's potential upregulation of prolactin. Let's look at this paper titled, quote, Androgen Regulation of Prolactin Receptor Gene Expression in MCF-7 and MDA-MB-453 Human Breast Cancer Cells, unquote, by C.J. Ormandy et al. Although not related in condition, when it comes to human breast cancer cells, DHT, among other compounds, increased the prolactin binding activity approximately twofold in MCF7 breast cancer cells after 24 hours. The study uses two compounds, RU38486 and RU23908. So shout out to the boys from Rousseau Ruklaf, that, you know, the guys that made RU58841. The, I'm saying the guys, but you know, the pharmaceutical company that made it. And they use these compounds to understand the pathways through which DHT and other compounds like ORG2058 act on the breast cancer cells. RU38486 is an antiprogesterone, and it did not affect the induction of prolactin by DHT. In contrast, RU23908 is an antiandrogen and it inhibited DHT's effects on prolactin expression. This data suggests that DHT is acting via the androgen receptor to induce prolactin expression in the MCF-7 cells. So it looks like DHT potentially, it's conceivable that it can interact with the androgen receptor and upregulate prolactin but this is a very specific case when it comes to breast cancer cells, right? Like, and this is in vitro, by the way. So let's let's not get too carried away. But what my point is, it's, it's that we could, with more research, find that DHT upregulates prolactin. But again, this is just another example of it being a downstream effect, right? The rise in prolactin or the expression of prolactin that leads to apoptosis is a downstream effect of DHT. So DHT is the catalyst for all these bad things to happen. So like I said earlier in the video, um, I mentioned HMI-115. So HMI-115 is being developed by Hope Medicine and it's currently in clinical trials for androgenetic alopecia and endometriosis. Now HMI-115 is a monoclonal antibody that targets the prolactin receptor. Recently, HMI-115 entered Phase 2 clinical studies for androgenetic alopecia as it just concluded Phase 1 studies. So HMI-115 could serve as a potential future treatment that deals with the downstream effects of DHT and gene expression of hair loss. So yeah, a bit of a long video. I touched on different topics here and there, but I think at the end of the day, we have a basis in which DHT is causing for the hair follicles to go through a state of miniaturization. We know that to be true, right? There's mountains and mountains of clinical evidence that proves this. And we know that there are different forms of androgenetic alopecia, as we can see with the Mysore and Gupta paper, right? We have different scales and just think about it. You can see a dude on the train with a Norwood one hairline, and then he stands up, turns around, and his whole crown is completely gone, right? These are different sensitivity zones on the scalp based on the individual's genetics. So it's just another form of gene expression based on how sensitive your hair follicles are. And then finally, in regards to prolactin, it's conceivable that prolactin is just another downstream effect from DHT's interaction with the androgen receptor, which causes a shit ton of things to happen that damages your hair follicles. So. It may be the case where you don't have to address DHT, right? It could be the case that you address the third thing that happens in the downstream effect. It could be high prolactin levels. It could be just something else, right? It could be something that you addressed after DHT that prevents the hair follicles from miniaturizing. So yeah, that's pretty much the basis of this video. So in my opinion, dupa, diffuse, unpatterned, uh, alopecia is just another form of androgenetic alopecia and at the end of the day the primary cause is the hair follicles sensitivity to DHT and an individual with dupa just happens to have their entire scalp being severely 
sensitive to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. So yeah guys, thanks for watching and this video is going to be a special video for a particular subscriber who's been asking for this video for uh, I want to say a couple months now. So shout out to Collins X62. Uh, hopefully I got the name right. Um, I'm not looking at the name directly right now. I'm just saying it from memory. But you've been really persistent for wanting this video. So here it is. It's made and hopefully you and others um, like my insight. So if you got to the end of this video, comment in the comment section below. Green tea. Yes, green tea. The actual tea that you drink. I don't know if it's green or not. You know, I've, I've, I've bought green tea before and it just came out being brown. Maybe it's like a darker shade of green or whatever, but fall is almost here. And uh, yeah, you know, some people like drinking green tea in the fall too. So comment green tea in the comment section below if you got to the end of this video. And yeah, thanks for the support I've been getting recently. It's, it's amazing to see this channel blow up. And uh, if you guys want to contact me, any sort of one-on-one -on -one consultation or anything like that, all my links are in the description along with my social media. So yeah. See you on the next video, guys, and have a nice day. Peace out.